Hello. Thank you for joining our talk on Kubernetes Topology Manager. My name is Victor Pickard. I work at Red Hat. My colleague, Connor Nolan from Intel, will be, will be presenting with me today. Please type your questions in the Q&A box, and we will address these at the end of the presentation. Here's an outline of our discussion today. We will introduce Topology Manager, why it is desirable and useful for certain scenarios. Now, we can't talk about Topology Manager without first giving a brief overview of two essential components, CPU Manager and Device Manager. So we will talk about these components a bit. Then we can dive into Topology Manager and show how this Kubernetes component works with both CPU Manager and Device Manager and how Topology Manager can be leveraged to maximize performance. Why use Topology Manager? What benefit does it provide? Connor will share some testing results from our friends and colleagues at Intel to help answer these questions. Are we done? Is Topology Manager finished? Is it complete? There's tremendous interest in Topology Manager with several enhancements being actively worked and investigated. We'll go over and give some highlights of these activities. Are you interested in learning more? Want to contribute? We'll have a few words on this topic as well. Why NUMA? A growing number of applications and workloads, especially in Telco 5G, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and other type of workloads often say we must be NUMA aligned. A common example of such a workload would be a DPD-based application. Here, the application would desire to have a certain number of dedicated CPUs, some chunk of huge page memory, a high-speed network interface, such as SR, IOV, virtual functions, with perhaps two or more of these, one for ingress, one for ingress. All of these resources would need to be on the same NUMA node in order to get the best performance. From a broader context, there's a desire to get the best performance possible out of the hardware. How do we achieve optimal performance with the lowest latency and high throughput? Well, we have to align resources on the same NUMA node. These resources include CPUs, devices such as network GPU devices, memory, and possibly more to meet these objectives. What is NUMA? So, We've mentioned NUMA several times. Some of you may already be familiar with NUMA, know what it is, and why we need it. For those that aren't familiar with NUMA, let's briefly review. NUMA is non-uniform memory access. Looking at the diagram on the right, we see a two NUMA node system. This system has two CPU sockets. Each CPU has local access to the directly connected memory and devices, and each CPU can certainly access all of the memory on the system. But as you can see, for example, for CPU 0 on socket 0, to access memory on NUMA node 1, it must go over the inter-socket connection. Accessing memory or devices over the interconnect adds delays. So to get the best performance, pod resources such as CPUs and devices should be on the same NUMA node and avoid the inter-socket connections. How do we get exclusive CPUs assigned to a container? We use CPU Manager. CPU Manager is a Kubernetes component that runs in the kubelet. It allocates and assigns exclusive CPUs to a container that specify a guaranteed quality of service, meaning that both requests and limits are integer values as shown in the sample pod spec. Now, for CPU Manager to allocate guaranteed exclusive CPUs to a container, the CPU manager policy must be set to static. For more information about the CPU manager, we've included a link to the blog post below at the bottom of this slide. So we have guaranteed exclusive CPUs assigned to a container. How are devices assigned and allocated? Well, Kubernetes has a device plugin framework. Devices can use the device plugin framework to implement plugins for GPUs, NICs, FPGAs, and other device resources that require vendor-specific setup and config. With the device plugin, you can advertise system hardware resources to the kubelet that will be used to assign resources to the container. So we've introduced CPU Manager, device plugins, and how they can be utilized to allocate resources to a pod and or container. But these allocations are done independently, no coordination, meaning the allocations could come from different NUMA nodes. 
How do we get these resources aligned? We use Topology Manager. Topology Manager is a component that runs inside the kubelet on each node. Topology Manager was promoted to beta as of Kubernetes 1.18. It provides an interface to allow CPUs and devices to coordinate resource assignment to pods and containers at the node level. Both CPU Manager and Device Manager support the Topology Manager interface. With Topology Manager, we now have the ability to assign and allocate resources such as CPUs, GPUs, network interfaces like SRV virtual functions to a container from the same NUMA node. Let's take a look at an example. On the left is a simple pod spec with one container. The container in this pod spec is requesting two CPUs, some memory, and one instance of device A. On the right, you see we have a two NUMA node system, four CPUs each, with two devices on each NUMA node. Now, using Topology Manager in coordination with CPU Manager and Device Manager, the kubelet will assign and allocate resources for this container from the same NUMA node. In this example, using Topology Manager, you can see that we have an aligned pod with two CPUs assigned from NUMA node 0 and one device A also from NUMA node 0. The resources for the pod are NUMA aligned, eliminating the overhead of the socket interconnect. Here we have optimized resource allocation. Now, Connor will take you through some of the details of Topology Manager, including policies, inner workings, along with some detailed examples. Connor, over to you. Thanks, Victor. So um, we've seen what Topology Manager is and why it's needed. So now I'm going to go into some more detail on how it actually works, starting with the Topology Manager policies. So the chosen policy is set at node level as a kubelet flag. And there are a few different options with varying degrees of strictness. Uh, the first is none, which is set by default. Uh, it doesn't do any kind of uh, resource alignment. The next is the best effort policy. Um, this will attempt to perform some resource alignment, but the pod will always be admitted regardless of whether that can be achieved or not. Then the restricted policy is the same as the best effort policy in terms of how it actually works under the hood, but the difference being that pod admission can be failed if an optimal alignment cannot be achieved. And we've got some examples coming up to show, to show you how that works. Uh, then finally, the single NUMA node policy as the name would suggest, will attempt alignment of resources for a container on a single NUMA node uh, and will fail pod admission if that cannot be achieved. So how Topology Manager actually works under the hood. So at pod admission time, the Topology Manager pod admit handler will loop over all containers in the pod. Then for each container, it will call out to the individual hint providers, which are currently the CPU manager and the device manager, as Victor has spoken about. And from those, gather what we've termed as topology hints uh, for each topology aware resource type. Uh, these topology hints are, are essentially all the possible allocations for a given resource. Uh, and again, these are covered in more detail in the next slide. Uh, so then once all of these hints have been accumulated, the topology manager using the selected policy will merge the gathered hints and then select a best hint that will align all, all requested resources. Uh, so then we loop back over those hint providers, instructing them to allocate their respective, res re respective resources uh, using that best hint as a guide for uh, which NUMA node or NUMA nodes they should allocate from. Then finally, as we mentioned, this loop runs at pod admission time. So if any of these steps fail or the alignment cannot be satisfied according to the policy for any of the containers in the pod, uh, the pod admission will fail with a topology affinity error. And any of those allocations that occurred prior to the failure are cleaned up accordingly. So mentioned in the previous slide, a topology hint. Uh, a topology hint is a construct that's used, that we use to describe how a resource request can be satisfied. So it currently consists of two fields, uh, the NUMA node affinity, this is a bit mask of NUMA nodes where a resource request can be satisfied, i.e. which NUMA node are NUMA nodes. Then the preferred field contains a, a Boolean that encodes whether that given hint is preferred or not. Uh, and there are some examples we have to explain what we mean by preferred and how that can influence pod admission with respect to the given policy. 
So if we take this example, uh, similar to the diagram Victor showed you earlier, so if this is the underlying hardware of our of our node, uh, we see over on the left we've got Numa node zero, and connected to that we have socket zero with four CPUs, and also connected to Numa node zero are three devices, so one GPU and two NICs. Then over on the right across that inter socket connection, we've got socket one with again four CPUs and three three connected devices, so uh, two GPUs and one NIC. And these are all connected to Numa node one. So all of these resources are available for allocation. And then the following pod is scheduled to the node. Um, and this pod is requesting two exclusive CPUs, uh, one NIC and one GPU. So now we can actually take a look at the topology hints that are returned from the individual hint providers, both the CPU manager and the device manager. So for the CPU resource type, we can see from the first CPU hint, the one with the uh, zero one true semantics, that a request for two CPUs can be satisfied entirely on Numa node zero. And this is indicated by the bit mask, which is encoded with Numa node zero, bit zero. And we also see that this allocation is preferred because it's the, the narrowest possible placement. And narrowness in this instance refers to the, the least number of bits set in that bit mask. So then the second CPU hint, the one zero true, this tells us that the request for two CPUs can also be satisfied uh, on Numa node one. And this allocation is also preferred because again, it is the narrowest possible placement or equal to the narrowest placement. The final and third CPU hint tells us that the request can also be satisfied across both Numa node zero and Numa node one. However, this allocation would not be preferred as there are narrower possible placements as we can see from the the first two hints. So the same hints are also returned from the other resource types in this particular scenario. And for example, we can see that a request for one NIC can be satisfied on either Numa node alone, which would be preferred, or with a bit mask for both Numa nodes, which would be unpreferred. And the same applies for the request of one GPU. So now the topology manager has gathered all hints from all providers, the next step is to merge these hints. So this is ultimately done by taking a cross product of hints across all resource types and performing a bitwise AND on the Numa node affinities of those hints. And this gives us a new bit mask for a merged hint. Uh, so for the preferred field, uh, in, any of the, in, in any of the hints in the cross product, if any of the hints in that cross product contain a non-preferred hint, then the merged hint is also non-preferred. Otherwise, it's set to true. Um, also, if the affinity of the merged hint is all zeros, uh, we set the preferred field to false. So then it's just a matter of iterating over all the possible permutations in those hints. And this continues right through until we have compiled a full list of our merged hints. So finally, once we have all those merged hints, it's up to the policy to then choose a best hint. So for the, uh, for the best effort policy in this scenario, the best hint chosen will be uh, the one with the zero one true semantics. And this is true for all K, all three policies. Uh, in other words, the best hint is to allocate from Numa node zero, and this is a preferred allocation. So this means that the best effort restricted and single Numa node policies are all satisfied by this placement and the pod will be admitted successfully under all three policies with the allocations shown. So all CPUs and all devices are allocated from the one Numa node, Numa node zero. Okay, so a slightly more complex example this time. Again, our node has the same underlying hardware topology. However, on this occasion, GPU one on Numa node one has already been allocated and is no longer available to us. Uh, so now the following pod is scheduled. Um, this part is one container requesting two exclusive CPUs, one NIC and two GPUs. So again, we look at uh, what kind of hints are returned by the hint providers. So for the CPU and NIC resource types, we see the same result. Uh, each request can be satisfied on either Numa node alone or across both Numa nodes. Uh, for the GPU resource type, we see a change. Uh, so now the request for two GPUs cannot be satisfied on Numa node zero or Numa node one alone. The only hint we see tells us that the request can only be satisfied across both Numa nodes, and this allocation is not preferred. The reason it's not preferred is that although it is the narrowest possible placement for this resource request at this time, it's still possible to satisfy this request for two GPUs on a single Numa node 
but just not right now because as we've seen, GPU one has already been allocated. So then if we look at the results per policy, for the best effort policy, although the final best hint is not preferred, this policy is all this policy always allows pot admission regardless and then uses the mer the best hint to allocate resources on a best effort basis as shown here. The restricted policy will always produce the same best hint as the best effort policy. However, it will fail pot admission when the merged hint is not preferred, as we see here. Uh, the logic being that it's better to fail and try to reschedule than to schedule with a non-preferred alignment. And this exact scenario we have here is a good example of how the restricted policy differs from the best effort policy. Then finally, the single Lumino policy's best hint tells us that the requested resources cannot be satisfied on a single Luma node, so therefore it will also fail pot admission. So our final example, again, the node is the same underlying hardware, uh, but this time all resources are available to us. And if we look at the pod, this time the pod schedule has one container requesting two exclusive CPUs, uh, three NICs, and three GPUs. So the hints that are returned for the CPU resource type, we see the same result. Again, the request can be satisfied on either Numa node alone or across both Numa nodes. Uh, for the GPU and NIC resource types, we now see that they both return a single hint with a bit mask of both Numa nodes, and this allocation is preferred. Now, the reason this is now preferred is because it is actually the narrowest possible placement that could ever be achieved for that request. Uh, for, for instance, a request for three GPUs, as you can see, can only ever be satisfied across both NUMA nodes, and likewise the request for three NICs. So then for each policy, we can see the result. Again, the best effort policy will always allow pot admission and use that best hint to allocate on a best effort basis as shown here. The restricted policy, um, the best hint is now preferred, so the preferred flag is set to true. And for that reason, the pod is admitted with what, what is now the narrowest alignment that could possibly be achieved for that request. And again, finally, we see the single Numino policy again will fail pod admission because its best hint tells us that the requested resources cannot be satisfied on a single Numino. So what does all this mean for performance? Well, at Intel, we released some updated collateral for our container experience kits earlier this year. And included in that was a technology guide on Topology Manager with some information on performance benchmarking. And the link to that is included if you'd like to check it out in a bit more detail. But the key takeaway here is that workloads that have an, a NUMA, NUMA alignment uh, of their resources by Topology Manager can achieve a performance increase of over 2x uh, versus workloads with that suboptimal allocation that Victor spoke about earlier. Uh, in this particular test, we did see a flat line on the performance improvements for the larger packet size once you went over 1,024 bytes. So, but this was just down to the, the test setup and the, the line rate essentially was maxed out at around 200 gigs. So we didn't get to see the performance beyond that. But again, as I said, the link to the technology guide is, in, is included in the slides. Uh, if you'd like to check that out and see what was actually done in detail uh, for anyone who's interested in that. Uh, so what the future looks like for Topology Manager. So first thing there, support for device-specific constraints. Uh, this will be part of the 1.19 release. So this is an enhancement to the device plugin API that allows, allows device plugins to indicate a list of preferred allocations for its device. Uh, so the plugin can take into account any internal topology constraints on the device when returning this list, then this information can be incorporated into the ultimate allocation decision. So it extends it beyond uh, simply just NUMA node affinity. Uh, support for pod level resource alignment. So the topology manager currently attempts to align all resources uh, for a single container. Uh, this enhancement would extend the scope to allow uh, alignment of all resources for all containers in a single pod. And uh, there's been a KEP uh, approved and merged, and that's linked here in the in the slides. Uh, NUMA alignment for huge pages. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the current hint providers for Topology Manager are the CPU Manager and the Device Manager, which provide hints for uh, CPU and device resources, naturally. Uh, but this proposal is for a new component called the Memory Manager, which would provide hints and ultimately NUMA alignment for uh, memory and huge pages. And there's a KEP under review on this. Uh, topology aware scheduling. Uh, there's been lots of discussion and talk on this topic. Um, you know, should the scheduler be NUMA aware? 
should this be an in-tree solution or an out-of-tree solution, et cetera, et cetera. And there's uh, a lot of ongoing work in this area across Red Hat, Intel, Samsung, Huawei, and others. And there's a couple of KEPs included in the slides, if you, again, if you'd like to learn more on that. Uh, per pod alignment policy. So as mentioned in the uh, on the topology manager policies, the policy is statically configured at node level at kubelet startup time. Um, so this enhancement would allow the user to specify a policy in the pod spec for a particular pod. Now, this change is something that would require an API change, and that, that in itself is challenging. Uh, but it's something that's been discussed briefly. As of now, there's no official plans are kept, but it's something that we've um, spoken about briefly. So finally, if you would like to find out more about Topology Manager, you can visit Kubernetes.io to read up on it, or you can read through the blog post that was released earlier this year to coincide with the 1.18 release and the graduation of the feature to beta. Um, again, all of this work has been done under the stewardship of Signode. I'd just like to give a special mention to uh, Derek Carr of Red Hat for all his help, and also a huge thanks to Kevin Clues of NVIDIA, who's done a huge amount of work on this and has been instrumental in taking uh, topology manager to where it is today. So if you'd like to get involved or hear more about this or any related projects, uh, the link for the uh, weekly signal meeting is also included. Uh, so I hope you found this informative. Um, thanks for listening. And myself and Victor are happy to take any questions. All right, I see we have some questions on the uh, Q&A board. Um, we're working to answer those as we can. Are there any questions uh, that folks would like to ask now? Okay, so we've got a list of questions. Uh, we'll start. Um, let's start with uh, there was a question: Are there memory allocation hints? And so the answer to that is currently there are uh, no memory allocation hints. But as Connor mentioned in the future enhancements, there is a memory manager kit that will. Uh, allow for hints for both uh, conventional memory and uh, huge page memory. Yeah, I see another one, Victor, there. Um, can Topology Manager reschedule already running pods to achieve best alignment with the request of new pod placement? Uh, so Topology Manager is part of the kubeless. It's not part of the scheduling decision-making. Um, what you know, yeah, if a pod can, in fact, be scheduled, but then fail. Um, so if you have a deployment, you know, if you if you don't get your optimal placement, it can be failed and then rescheduled. Um, but as regards to this, I think from what I can understand from this specific question, um, no, that's not something that's um, doable in the current topology manager. Yes, I, I agree with that, Connor. Can't uh, currently no way to uh, reschedule currently running pods. They'll either be uh, admitted and be new land or they will fail to be admitted based on the topology manager policy. Um, next question is, uh, there was a, a question, which version of OpenShift will have topology manager as GA? And so the answer to that is topology manager is GA and OpenShift 4.6. Uh, another question was, uh, is it possible to have the slots for this presentation? So if you go to the schedule uh, on the agenda, the slots are there. Um, so you should be able to find them. Okay. Uh, Connor, you want to take the question about uh, how to check the, let's see, what's the question? How do you check the, uh, um, 
to see if the how can we check in a running cluster if the requested resources for each pod are on the same number node? So there, there are two answers. Um, one is you can, for example, on your system to check for the CPUs, you can do uh, LS CPU, and you can uh, on the multi-socket system you'll see the CPUs and the numa node assigned, and then you can, for example, SSH or connect to the pod and look at the CPUs that are assigned. And Connor, you also had a, another way to check this. Yeah, so you can also check through the um, the Kubler checkpoint file. Um, so that will list any exclusive um, CPU allocations to containers or devices. Um, it won't tell you the NUMA node, but you can, you, it will tell you which CPU ID it is, and then you can cross-reference that with something like LSCPU. Um, and just another thing that's popped into my head there, interestingly, I've seen um, uh, a KEP uh, in the last week or two to uh, extend the pod resources uh, cube endpoint to um, be able to show you information such as um, uh, Numenode information on CPUs allocated to containers and pods. Um, I think it's very early days, obviously, if there's only a KEP involved. But, um, that would be something that would be very useful, I think, going forward. Okay. <clears throat> Next question. Um, would it be possible for you guys to develop a scanning feature to check how much we could improve performance if we use Topology Manager? Um, I'm not quite sure what you mean by scanning feature, uh, but, you know, what, what has been done is um, Connor and his team at Intel have, have done some testing. Um, and uh, the results are uh, posted and you know shared in some of the improvements that was the, that were there. I'm not quite sure what the what the scanning feature would be. Um, so I, I think uh, I don't know if you can rephrase the question. Maybe that that would help. Connor, do you have any input on that one? Um, no, just that. And again, there's a link to the white paper on that included in the slides. If anyone wants to check it out in a bit more detail. Probably offer a bit more than what was mentioned in the in the presentation. Um, I'm just looking. There's one really long question in there. Um, describes the setup. Uh, it takes me a few minutes to get through it, and but um, whoever asked that, maybe um, you could sync with us afterwards. Um, I I will be heading over to the the Intel booth. Uh, I think there's a Zoom uh, room set up for any Q and A's people have afterwards. And also the Slack channel will be open if you want to carry on that discussion. Okay. Um, next question. If I am using host network, if I am using host network with node with multiple interfaces, can I use topology manager to allocate interfaces to a pod? So, um, you know, um, again, topology manager requires a hint provider for um, things like uh, CPUs and devices. So right now, to use multiple interfaces in Kubernetes, we have, uh, it requires um, Maltus. And so with Maltus, it does support um, having multiple SRV interfaces. And we can <clears throat> align SR, for example, SRV virtual functions. So if you have, um, if you want to use multiple interfaces, one way that is supported is to use um, the SRIV device plugin, and you can get high-speed interfaces with that. Now, the question about if I'm using host network, uh, I'm not quite sure about that one. Um, I'd have to follow up with you offline maybe or uh, in Slack to get more info on that. Um, Tom, do you have any uh, additional input on that one? Uh, no, sorry, I was just reading through another one. Um, this one there is the support for private and public clouds. Um, so, Topology Manager was alpha for Kubernetes 1.16 and beta as of 1.18, um, and it, it's it's integrated into the Kubelet. Okay. Are there any questions that we haven't covered? I'm looking to see. I think, have we addressed them all? Okay. Uh, 
I think that's all of the questions that um, I'm just going through reading these. Okay, so if you want to, uh, you know, continue the conversation, you have more questions, take a look at the um, channel number two, KubeCon Custom Extend K8s on your Slack workspace after the session ends. We'll be there uh, to answer any questions and, you know, chat with you. And thank you for, you know, attending. Feel free to, uh, you know, reach us over there. And as Connor mentioned, uh, Connor, I think you said there was a Intel room. You want to share some more on that again? Yeah, I'll be, I'll be heading over to the, the Intel booth now to join. Um, I think there's a Zoom room set up for any Q&A people might have after the talk. So if anyone has any follow-ups, uh, feel free to head over there. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining. Hope you found it informative.